What's going on everybody? My name is Dylan, also known as Vitex TV. Welcome back to the channel, and as always, I hope you guys are all having a blessed day. Alright guys, so this is going to be episode 6 of my Beginner's Guide to Destiny. Uh, the series has been going great. You know, I've loved uh, feedback and everything else. You know, uh, people have come to the stream and told me, uh, you know, that they like the, the series. And, you know, I'm definitely happy with where it's going. And uh, I appreciate any of any support that you guys show me on any of these videos. It's always greatly appreciated. Um, but getting into this video today, uh, it's probably going to be shorter, you know, probably a lot shorter than all the other videos. Because the other videos were really kind of introducing you to the base game, you know, showing you all the ins and outs. You know, we, we've talked about a lot. We've talked about, you know, characters that you should, you know, choose. We've talked about weapon mods, you know, different weapons, you know, armor, along with armor mods. You know, we've covered Crucible, Gambit, uh, Strikes, you know, Vanguard stuff. And, um, you know, we've covered the different planets that you can go to and the different, you know, materials that you can go and farm at those planets. Uh, but today, I kind of wanted to cover more of, you know, power leveling and how you can effectively, you know, raise your power and, and do it in a quick way. And, um, you know, that's, that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy this video. Please uh, let me know in the comments if this uh, series is helping you. And uh, please leave some suggestions down below as to what I should cover in the next one. So, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about power leveling in this game. Uh, you know, basically power leveling, <coughs> you have your main po power level, which is comprised of all your different uh, armor pieces and your weapons. And, you know, they all... Are cumulative to your overall power and uh, the best way to power up or well power level in this game is to do powerful you know do things that will give you powerful rewards and pinnacle rewards but uh, there is an order that you should go in when you're doing these powerful rewards you know not all powerful rewards are all made the same you know there are definitely levels to it and we're going to get into that but first, we need to look at what are all the different things that we can do to get powerful gear. So let's bring up our uh, destinations and just go through and, uh, and see what gives us powerful gear. So uh, if you notice, uh, near the different uh, destinations, there's going to be a little gold uh, icon here. And that's telling you of a different powerful, you know, activity that you can do to get a powerful reward. So if we look here at the tower, uh, once we get to a high enough power level, you know, the dungeon, the prophecy dungeon, it recommends that we be 1040. But once we get to a point to where we can run the dungeon, the different encounters from that dungeon will give us pinnacle gear, meaning that it can drop anywhere from one to three light you know, it will drop gear from one to three light higher than what we are. So, I mean, it can give you big boosts to your power level. You know, if you're stuck at a cap and you can't seem to get any higher off of, you know, any higher gear off of the things you're doing, try doing a pinnacle activity, and that pinnacle reward should help boost your overall light. So, obviously, the dungeon's going to be out of the question for us for right now. Obviously, it recommends we're 1040. We're a 960, so we need to focus on things that we can do to help build, you know, our light where we are right now. And pretty much starting out, before you hit a thousand light level, pretty much everything you do in this game is going to give you rewards that will boost your overall light level. You know, there's different caps in Destiny 2, and what I mean is your, your level gets capped out based on where you're at, so... You know, there's there's a soft cap, there's a hard cap. One of the first caps that you'll hit in this game, it, and and you'll you'll start to notice it around 1020 to 1030. You know, you'll start to notice that you know drops from random cru random crucible matches or random strikes will stop dropping. You know, higher, and you'll actually have to start doing more powerful rewards. You know, you'll you'll probably start to see it as well around a thousand. Um, I, I, I don't really know exactly 
because it's been so long since I've done this stuff, I, I've been 1060 for a while now. You know, I hit 1050 months ago, so, you know, I don't know if they've changed anything with the caps, but all I know is you should be able to raise your power level, you know, significantly and do it pretty quickly until you start hitting around the 1020 to 1030 mark. At least that's when I remember, you know, having trouble, you know, just getting higher light <laughs> just from doing normal activities. So, uh, but for right now, just do any activity that you feel like you, you want to do, whether it's run crucible matches or run strikes, and you should get gear that's higher than what you already have. Also, taking your tokens and your planetary materials and going to the different vendors and leveling up your vendors, they should give you rewards that are higher than your overall, all, your overall light is right now. So as we get into the game, uh, if, if we look at our map here, if we look at the tower map, you'll see that there's a bunch of light blue uh, symbols. And what these symbols you know, mean is these are the different cha um, powerful you know, activities that we can do to get powerful rewards. So you can see the Drifter has one, uh, Banshee44 has one, uh, Shax has one, and Savala has one. And basically, all you need to do to unlock the powerful gear from these activities is just complete a certain number of bounties. So I'm pretty sure for all of them, it's going to be eight bounties. So once you complete eight of their bounties, you turn those bounties in, and you go back to them, and they will give you a powerful reward. But notice how the powerful gear down at the bottom, it says it's a tier one. So that means that the powerful rewards you get from it is only going to give you up to one power level above what you are right now. So, at, like I said, once you start hitting that 10, 20 to 10, 30 range where you have to start doing powerful stuff like this to get better gear, once you start hitting that, you know, that little soft cap there, you're, when you do these powerful gear, they're only going to give you up to one, plus one power level when you do them. So you want to knock these out first because they're the lowest tier of powerful rewards. You definitely don't want to be doing your pinnacles first because you want to be as high of a light as you possibly can before you knock out your pinnacles. So anything with a pinnacle reward uh, attached to it, you want to save that for last. That's, that should be the last thing that you check off your list when you're doing your powerful rewards. Tier 1s always go first. So you do all your tier 1s here. And then if we go to our, you know, we go back to destinations, if we look at Crucible, uh, I think we need to just run more Crucible to unlock being able to get powerful rewards. But once you've run enough Crucible, and you, I think there's like a little quest line that you have to do for Shags before you can start unlocking this. You know, maybe you have to do the bounty thing first. But um, what you'll be able to do is there's a, there's um there's two different like playlists when it comes to Crucible. So you have your core playlists, which means your game modes that are always going to be there. So things like Control and and Classic Mix and uh, you know Rumble will always be there as well. So you know things like this that will always be there. Uh, elimination is always going to be here as well. Um, so these are your core playlists. If you play four games within those core playlists you get a pinnacle reward. And then if you play, you, you know, like I said, there's core and then there's rotator playlist. So up at the top here are going to be your game modes that rotate every week. So this is the more competitive, you know, rotator playlist. This is the more casual rotator playlist. So this week it's momentum control. It's a, it, you know, it's a variation of control. Uh, once you play, you'll start to figure out, you know, and it gives you a little, de you know, a description here. But you play four matches in the rotator, and it'll give you a tier one powerful gear. So always do your rotators first before doing your core matches. That way you can capitalize on the gear that you get. So rotators first in Crucible. And then when you get over here to uh, uh, your strikes, uh, once you run, you know, you see I have a little quest symbol bias, so that's probably what I have to do first before I unlock it. But you, you know, once you get uh, to a certain point, you'll be able to run three strikes, and uh, those three strikes will give you 
once you've finished all three strikes, they'll give you a pinnacle reward. So this is one of those things that you want to save for last. And then Gambit, running three Gambit matches, will also give you a pinnacle reward. So just note that the four core matches, the three Gambit matches, and the four sh or the three strikes will give you pinnacle rewards. So save those for last. Those, you know, those are, you know, those are going to be the things that help you help, help push your light up the most. And then there's also, you know, every week there's going to be something called a, uh, a flashpoint. Uh, I don't have it up. I don't see it anywhere. I don't think that I, I'll be able to see the flashpoint. I have to play a little bit more to unlock it. But every week there will be a flashpoint at one of the uh, the destinations you know it can be on any of the planets and basically you just go to that certain planet you do enough objectives you know whether it's running law sectors public events patrols all that good stuff it will go by a percentage once you you know complete enough of those activities you'll get a uh, a tier one powerful reward and it might be tier two but you know it's going to be a low tier powerful reward so those are one that's one of the ones that you want to knock out first so you know so far as far as low tier powerful rewards we've got the uh, we've got all the people here at the tower so that's four of them we have the flashpoint which can be anywhere on the map also if you get shadow keep uh, the stuff that you can do for Eris Morn and uh, the little thing that's beside her, I forgot what it's called, but those will give you powerful rewards as well. And then there's also things called nightmare hunts. You do a couple nightmare hunts and it'll give you a, a pinnacle reward. Or I think they give you powerfuls and you have to do those uh, on a certain difficulty. I think it's master difficulty to get the pinnacle. So... Um, but you can only do the stuff on the moon if you have Shadow Keep. Um, obviously, you can do some things. Um, you can unlock the destination just by go, you know doing like the first mission. I think they do allow you to do the first mission. But as far as like anything else that'll give you powerful rewards, I'm pretty sure you have to own the DLC. So if you're a free to you know free to play player, you know that's what this channel is based on right now. This account's based on. Then we're not really going to worry about that. So really all that we have to level up right now is the vendors at the tower. Eventually we'll unlock the flashpoint. And then we have pinnacles from the Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible. And so the order that I would do this stuff in, it, you know, and the order that I am going to do this in, you know, as I continue to level this account up, is I'm going to knock out all of my vendors first so when you load into the tower uh at the beginning of the week at the weekly reset pick up all the bounties that you can you know i know that a bunch of them are worth a lot of uh glimmer uh, but if you have some extra legendary shards you can go to spider and he'll sell glimmer for legendary shards on certain days if he doesn't do it the day that you try it try the next day but eventually he will sell glimmer for legendary shards you can max. You can cap out your glimmer pretty quickly. Um, also, if you have an overabundance of shaders, you know you can go to Master Raul, and um, you can you can massive you know delete shaders. You know, so that can give you a bunch of glimmer as well. But you know, pick up all your bounties for all your vendors, and then. I usually like to do the things that are most annoying first, so I'll run my Gambit matches first, but I'm not running all three of them. I'll, uh, my main goal is to complete all the Gambit bounties that I've picked up, complete them in two runs. And so, you know, you really have to, you know, look at the bounties and see what you're doing and really try to focus on getting those bounties done while you're playing. So, uh, you know, I'll get all my bounties done in two Gambit matches, that way I don't waste my third game and match and get my pinnacle too early and then we'll move over to uh, strikes and most of the time a lot of your strike bounties and your weapon bounties from banshee a lot of the times you'll get similar bounties from both of them so like say 
you know, you get a shotgun bounty from um, from Banshee, and it's to get like 15 or 20 shotgun kills. Well, there is a chance that Zavala here will drop a shotgun bounty as well, where you have to get 15 or 20 shotgun kills. So that's literally two birds with one stone. You're doing two different bounties uh, just in one playlist. So, you know, I try to get both of these done while I'm running my two strikes. And you really have to pay attention and look at the different weapons that Banshee gives you in your bounties so that you can go to your collections, pick up what you need, and really, you know, utilize and, you know, be efficient when you're doing this. Because, you know, if, if you wait, you know, you can end up having to do more strikes than you need and then you'll lose your pinnacle. So, you know, really, really focus in on what you have to do and try to get everything done within those uh, two strikes. You know, it, and what I like to do, if it's a strike where it starts me off in a main region of the map, I'll try to find a lost sector that's close to where I spawn. So let's say for instance, you know, we get, we get the Lake of Shadows, right? Well, the Lake of Shadows strike spawns you right here in the Trostland. And as you can see, the Trostland has three lost sectors in it. I mean, it should. I, I see two, but I know that there's... I don't think we can see the one in the church because uh, this this is um, blocking it, but there's three lost sectors that you can possibly do at the uh, Trotsland. So if you load into the Lake of Shadows and you're trying to get weapon kills, instead of running the strike, just go into the lost sector and farm the enemies in it. Once you kill all the enemies, you can run back out and then reload the Lost Sector by running back in, and the enemies will respawn. So you don't have to worry about your teammates stealing your kills throughout the strike. You can just go into that Lost Sector and farm up. Now, obviously, the Lick of Shadows is a really easy and fast strike to do, so you're going to have to maximize what you're doing very fast. You're going, you can't dilly-dally, because your teammates are probably going to get to the end of the strike, and once you get to the boss, it's going to pull you with them. So get in there and, and kill. Don't... <laughs> You know, don't don't slack off. Get in there and, and get your kills done. But you can do this in a bunch of different strikes. But, you know, the main thing is trying to get those kills done in those two strikes before you have to go into your third one. And obviously, you know, you can save those bounties if you know that on the third strike you'll get them done. You can save those bounties to do for last, you know, and then, you know, run your third strike. So, but yeah, you maximize what bounties you're doing with the different playlists you're doing it. So after, you know, strikes, you run your two strikes, you get your bounties done. Then uh, I'm going to move over to Crucible, play my three core Crucible matches, and in that time, get my eight bounties done. And then once I finish those three Crucible matches, I'll go back to the tower. I'll, uh, I'll turn in all my, uh, you know, turn in all my bounties and then go to each of, you know, uh, vendors and get my powerful you know pieces and hopefully by then I will have powered up a little bit and then I'll go back through and run all of the pinnacle stuff so you know I'll do my last strike do my last gambit do my last crucible match get those pinnacle rewards but obviously you know before that you know you yeah, run my rotators to get the powerful drop and then obviously do the flashpoint so be sure that you're looking at you know, what the powerful say when you hover over what you're doing. So, like I said, you know, as you can see with Trials of Osiris right now, if you get to three matches, you'll get a powerful gear. If you get to five matches, if you win five games, you'll get another, I think it's a tier three powerful gear. And then if you go flawless, you get seven, you, you win seven games, you'll get a pinnacle reward. So, you know, like I said, the dungeon here is a pinnacle while... These little um, these little challenges here are just tier one powerfuls, so you know it, it, you know when you're looking it'll go uh, tier one powerful, tier two powerful, tier three powerful. So I don't know if there's any tier threes in the game right now. There might be, but you know if you're a free to play player, you're most likely not going to have any tier threes to do. So you know there's probably just going to be some tier ones, you know one or two tier twos. And then there's pinnacles. Now, pinnacles aren't the same either. 
you know, the pinnacles from Gambit, from Crucible, and from Strikes are going to be different from pinnacles of other things. So an example of that is if we go into our Strikes, you get a pinnacle from running three Strikes, but you also get a pinnacle from running the Nightfall Ordeal on a certain difficulty and getting to a certain... Um, I think you have to get like 100,000 score in that Nightfall to get the Pinnacle Reward. Now, the Pinnacle Reward from this activity is going to be a lot higher than the Pinnacle Reward from your Strikes. You know, that's just because this content is a lot harder to do, so the reward is going to be higher because you, you completed harder content. So just remember that. Pinnacles aren't made the same either. Your, your base Pinnacles, which is your control, your, or sorry, your Crucible, Gambit, and um, your Strike Pinnacles are going to be lower Pinnacles than, say, if you go into a Nightfall or like the Nightmare Hunts I was talking about. If you decide to run a raid, you know, the Raid Pinnacles are going to be higher. The Dungeon Pinnacles are going to be higher. So, you know, they, they have tiers, and so you really have to pay attention and, and look at the rewards you're getting and, you know, You'll quickly figure out, oh, this this powerful reward gives me better gear, so I'll save it for last. And so, so that's the most efficient way to power level your character. You do all of your powerful gear in a certain order. You do all your powerful activities and get them done in a certain order, and that will maximize your power. You know, your power leveling every week. And so by the time that Beyond Light gets here, you know, you can – I feel like if you, if you play the game enough, you can easily get to around 1030, 1040. You know, and if you're playing a lot, you can probably get upwards to 1050. You know, I don't think that there's enough time to get to 1060. There, I, there's just no way. There's only like two weeks left. But you can get closer to the soft cap of 1050. And so, um, but yeah, that, that's the most efficient way to level your character. And if you really want to maximize your power leveling and really take it to the next level, you can make more than one character. So me, currently, on my like you know main account, I run all three characters. I have a Titan, a Warlock, uh, yeah, a Titan, a Warlock, and a Hunter. And I do, you know, to get to 1060, I did my powerfuls on all three characters every week. And um, there is a uh, there is a method to that as well when you're power leveling with three characters. It's sort of like a seesaw effect. So, you know, the character you start on at the beginning of the week is going to be your lowest character by the end of the week. So let's say you start all of your powerful stuff on your Warlock. By the time you get to your Titan, your Titan is going to be a higher power level than your Warlock. So always save, try to save your um, your uh, your main character to be last when you're starting. So, you know, when I was trying to get my Warlock to the highest power, I started on my Titan first, and then I went to my Hunter, and then I ended on my Warlock. But then the next week, I would start on my Warlock and then end on my Titan. And so that way, the Titan now became the highest power level. And then I would, you know, you seesaw back and forth every week. So, you know, and that's, that's the best way because, you know, the weapons that you get on your highest character, you can transfer them over to your next character and they, sh they will boost the level of your lowest character. So let's say I have a couple of, you know, 1030 weapons on my Warlock at the end of that week. I put those 1030 weapons on, let's say, my 1020 Titan at the start of the next week. And that boosts my overall, you know, power level to, you know, maybe 10, you know, close to 1025. And so I'm starting out at 1025 on my Titan. And, and then by the time I get back, you know, you know, you you see what I'm saying. You're you're seesawing back and forth between your three characters, and that ultimately is the best way to go about power leveling in this game. If you really want to maximize your power level, and you really want to get to a high, you know, 
a high level before the new season starts. Make three characters and bounce the powerful rewards off, off each other. So you start on one, you end on the other, and then you start on that one that you ended off on, and you rinse and repeat. Now I'm telling you guys, your light is going to boost so quickly. You know, you can be a solo player, but or like a solo character player, but it's going to take you so much longer to level up. So please utilize having multiple characters. You know, switching between them can definitely kind of be tricky when you're first starting out in this game. They all have different jumps. They all have different abilities. So getting used to one at the start is really good. But being able to have all three to maximize your power leveling is, you know, in my opinion, just, you know, it's worth, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. But, but yeah, that is how you efficiently power level in Destiny 2. You, you know, you make three characters. You get to a point, I would say, try to get everybody to at least above 1,000 before you start doing the whole seesaw method. Um, and, and really, if you can, you know, try to get to the highest light that you possibly can before. So, you know, for me, if it was me starting at this game... I would wait until I'm around 10, 20 power level on all three characters, and you should be able to do that fairly easily. Like I said, the characters, I, I mean, the weapons I get on this character, I can transfer over to my other two characters and help boost their armor <laughs> up fast. So just because it took you a decent time on your first character to get to a certain power level, it'll probably take half the time on your other two. That's the benefits of running multiple characters. So I would probably wait until I'm around 10, 20 on all three characters to start doing the seesaw uh, method. And, um, you know, within two weeks, I guarantee you that you, you'll probably, you, you can get close to 10, 40 and maybe even 10, 50 by Beyond Light. Um, but there is one thing that I am leaving out, and it is these bad boys right here, Umbral Ingrams. Umbral Ingrams are awesome because they always seem to drop around your light level. And definitely when you're first starting out, they'll drop most of the time higher than your level. So, you know, right now I'm at 966 overall. Uh, I think my highest piece is, you know, are 970s. And so I do have a, uh, sorry, I do have a 970 here. But the cool thing about Umbrals is that you can increase the light level that they're at if you focus them at the decoder. So if we go over here to, uh, what's, it, what's his name? <laughs> the Gambit guy. Um, dude, the Drifter, Lord. Can't even think straight. But if we go to the Drifter and we go to the Prismatic Recaster, uh, you can unlock different um, different little nodes in that recaster that allow you to upgrade your Umbral Ingrams. So let me get over here and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we go in here, we go to the big machine right here, the Prismat Recaster. And so, I haven't unlocked it yet. Um, I don't even know if you can do that without owning uh, this season's pass. But if you do end up buying it, you know, obviously I could just go over here and go to the decoder. And decrypt them as, it, as they are right now. But, if you upgrade them, you know... The, the light level will boost up. And I think it does that for your first five. I want to say five Umbral Ingrams of the week on each character. For your first five Umbral Ingrams, if you focus them, they will give you powerful drops. But doing this, you know, even as a free-to-play player, always turn in your Umbral Ingrams. Because like I said, this is a 970 out of 950 helmet instantly boosts me up to 970 overall we got 966 uh, lonesome which isn't that great um, 
Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a bad omens that helped us. But you can also, you know, get weapons and armor pieces that could potentially be really good as far as the perks on them. So if we look at this Lonesome, you know, this Lonesome has full auto and multi-kill clip on it. Full auto is really nice because it allows you to just hold the hold the mouse button. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Hold the mouse button down instead of having to tap it over and over. So it ultimately increases your rate of fire. And multi-kill clip gives you a damage bonus based on the amount of kills you got before reloading. It stacks up to three times. So if you kill three enemies and reload, you'll get a big damage bonus on, on your next couple of shots. And you can keep proccing it over and over again. So you get a couple kills, reload, you do more damage. You get a couple more kills, you reload, you do more damage. It's a nice perk. So that's another thing that these umbrals are good for, is finding good rolled weapons and armor pieces for your characters. So definitely be looking out for umbrals that are on the ground. Go to your postmaster if you, you, know, if you think you missed some. Always turn them in because they can definitely help you with your overall power and get some really good gear. But yeah, that is going to do it for this episode. Like I said, we're at about, you know, 32 minutes in, so it's significantly, you know, shorter than all my other videos. I think all the other ones are around 50 minutes, but like I said, you know, we you know, those are longer because there was a lot more information and um, you know, we had a lot more things to cover in those. But with this one, we pretty much just focused on one topic. And uh, you know, got that you know got that out of the way. This is this is a pretty big episode. This hopefully this episode. If you don't take away anything else from any of the other episodes that I put out, this is the main one. This is super important if you really want to boost your character's life, you know, power level, and um, just overall be able to do more things when the next DLC comes out. Because obviously the power level, the cap right now we're capped at 1060 power level. When a new season drops, that power level is going to go up. And so we'll have more stuff to grind for. But obviously, those activities that we're going to be doing are going to require us to be higher levels. So you want to give yourself the biggest, you know, the biggest advantage that you can going into the new season by being the highest power that you can be. You know, in a perfect world, you want to be 960 going into the new DLC. But obviously, you know, starting this late. Like I said, you know, the best that you could probably do right now is around 940 to 950, and that's if you're grinding, you know. So put the time in, do your powerfuls, make other characters, do the seesaw method, and y you'll, you'll see your power level start to skyrocket. Uh, but there is one more thing that I want to do before we close this out. This is... This is a vendor that I have not talked about yet. I don't think I've gotten a chance to talk about him just yet. I, I think I have mentioned him, and uh, in a couple, you know, at least one video prior. But now we're actually going to go. We're going to meet him and see what he's all about. You know, because this is like a this is a you know, kind of a secret vendor if you haven't played the game before. He only comes on the weekends, so Monday through Friday. Uh, you have to visit him before the weekly reset on Tuesday because he does go away. But it's a vendor that can come in clutch if, you, if you're in desperate need of a certain exotic weapon or armor piece. This guy could potentially hook you up. So this, and uh, the thing is, each week he changes where, he, um, where he's located. So this week he's at the Winding Cove on the EDZ, and he's standing up here by this big ship. So we do have to do a little bit of scaling here to get up to him. All right, and so here he is. This is Zer. I am an agent of the Nine. An agent of the Nine, and so Zer. The really cool thing about Zer is he brings exotics. Um, he brings at least one exotic um, weapon every week, and then he'll bring a different exotic armor piece for the different characters. So this week he has the Cerberus. Um, unfortunately, you can only get the Cerberus if you have the Forsaken DLC. 
And the same goes with this uh, Warlock Helmet. You can only pick it up if you have the Shadow Keep DLC. Um, but there will be different exotics each week, so this this weapon will change, and these three weapons will change as, or I mean, I'm sorry, three armor pieces will change as well. But then he also has um, an exotic Ingram up here that you can purchase, and it will give you any exotic that you don't already own. So it could be an armor piece, it could be a weapon, whatever the case may be. If you're looking for a specific exotic, you can go to Zer and he'll drop you one. Uh, you can only do this once a week, o only on one character too. You can't do this on all three characters. He, you know, this is he, he gives you one Ingram, <laughs> and so you want to pick the character, you know, a character w with an exotic that you're looking for. So like if you were looking for Stompies for your w hunter, you want to be on your hunter when you go to him. You're looking for transverse of steps on your warlock. You want to be on your warlock. If you're looking for doom marchers, you want to be on your titan. So, um, and you have to have 97 legendary shards. That's the only downside to this. Uh, getting this random exotic is you have to have a decent supply of legendary shards. And the same goes down here. These are a lot less expensive, though. You know, see, this is 23 legendary shards. Uh, 29 for the weapon, so... Um, but when you're looking at these, you want to look at the rolls that come with them. So uh, this week, he brought a pretty good roll on the uh, Lucky Pants. I would advise people to pick these up if you're a Hunter player, and, um, and especially if you main hand cannons. You know, precision hits load around into stowed hand cannons, and it, uh, and it lets you um, holster and unholster hand cannons. It, it pretty much gives them quick draw. You know, so you can pull them out and, and re you know, stow them a lot faster. And it also gives you um, an accuracy boost when you uh, uh, fire them. And you start to fire them immediately after swapping to them. So not only can you swap to hand cannons faster, but they'll also be more accurate for a short period of time after you swap to them. A super nice exotic, and it comes with a really nice roll with uh, a 15 mobility, a 13 recovery, which could go all the way up to a 23 recovery recovery with a recovery mod and then a 16 intellect so they're a 62 stat roll overall really nice and just overall really good exotic i'm probably gonna go ahead and pick these up because i do intend on making a hunter on this account so i will at least have one decent exotic um heart of most light it's okay um but the roll on it is absolutely horrible you know you want high recovery and high intellect and both of those are at a nine uh, it's really not worth picking it up. And then the Fell Winter's Helm is not that good of an exotic. Uh, it has decent stats on it, but like I said, it, you know, I figure most of you are like me and we're free to play players. So obviously we don't have Shadow Keep, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, uh, but yeah, make sure you go to this guy every weekend and see what he has. He could have an exotic that you really want, or he can have an upgrade to an exotic that you already have. So let's say you already have a pair of Stompies, but the roll on it is really, really bad. He could bring another set of Stompies that are better than the ones that you currently have. So always give this guy a look uh, every weekend. And, you know, there's, uh, there's, you know, you can Google Zer's location. Like I said, he will be somewhere different. You know, he can be in the tower. He can be on Titan. He can be on Nessus. You know, this week he's on the EDZ. You know, so you can always look it up. There's usually people on YouTube who post his location as soon as he comes out. So, you you know, you can just go there and look it up. But, uh, but yeah, so that, you know, with that, we're, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. You know, I feel really good about this episode. I feel, you know, like I said, this, in my opinion, is the most important episode that I'll probably put out of this series. And, um... Honestly, when it comes down to it, there's not a lot more to talk about. Um, we've essentially covered all of the main things. So I think what I'm going to do from here is in the next set of episodes is basically I'll probably just give you guys a rundown of what I've, I've accomplished on the account uh, in that week. So giving you an overall on... You know, what weapons I've gotten, what armor pieces I've gotten, you know, my current light level, you know. 
and just uh, really try to focus in on leveling up for the new season. Um, obviously, I have a main account that's already good, but, you know, I feel like this account, I'm doing this with you guys. So, you know, we're in, we're in the same boat together. Uh, and so it was really nice to be able to get this account. My goal, I don't know <laughs> if it's possible, but my goal is to at least get this account to around 1030 to 1040 before Beyond Light, you know, before Beyond Light hits us. So, you know, but yeah, with all that being said, that's going to do it. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. I, I hope that you found this informative and and helpful and um, if it did please drop a comment down below let me know and uh, like I said earlier please drop any you know suggestions for what I should cover and uh, the next episodes I've started doing the campaign on this account on my twitch and so I will be continuing to go through the story on my on my uh on this account here on twitch so please you know feel free to stop by and uh watch and experience that stuff with me and uh just watch the the account grow you know this is this is a nice fun little change um you know because like i said my main is already you know has everything that it really needs there's nothing really to do on that account anymore until beyond uh beyond light hits so it's it's really nice going through and having stuff to do but um I'm starting to ramble now. I hope you guys all enjoy the video. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I hope you have a good one. I'm out.